Okay. Okay, we will call the uh, October 1st Franker Planning Commission meeting to order and stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, we are ready to call the roll. Mr. Townsend. Here. Mr. Poole. Here. Ms. Woodard. Mr. Allen. Here. Mr. Hollinsworth. Here. Ms. Mason. Mr. Gregg. Here. Mr. Powell. Here. Ms. Boyd. Here. We have a quorum, seven members present, two absent. Okay, is there a motion for approval of the minutes from the September 3rd meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? They will stand approved. All right, tonight under new business we have a request to move the first item uh, 4.1 farther down the, uh, in the agenda uh, so somebody can, can get here if possible. possible. Uh, I don't know if we need a motion to do that or not, do we, Dave? Um, I would say it would probably just be best to... Okay. Is there a motion to move that down to the bottom of the agenda? So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, we'll move that down. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item 4.2 is the Ackland Properties Group uh, rezoning request from R10 to MRO. Uh, is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. And we have a motion and a second. So we're ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've received a petition from that. Ackland Properties Group to rezone an 8.4 acre parcel that is presently zoned R10 to MRO. It is uh, this property right here. Uh, it's on the be on the east side of Bill Jones Industrial Drive. This is Reed Road. It goes up to this intersection, and this is now Electrolux Drive right here. So uh, the property is across from 10th. Uh, and, uh, but they're wanting to do uh, an MRO rezoning. Um, the MRO classification would allow them to do 121 units. With that said, that piece of property is rough as a cob. And uh, I think that the most that they're gonna be able to get on it is 60, and, and, they, and, they're, and that's all they really wanted to do anyway. I, I think Mr. Uh, lines with uh, Clover Engineering is here and has some further information on that if, and let me get him up here to, to explain further. That Ms. sounds Lines. good. You brought handouts. Yes, yes, this was one of those last minute ones that we were asked to throw together. Good evening, Josh with Clover Engineering. Uh, and yes, Dave is correct. This is a very hilly, a lot of constraints within this property between uh, water lines and uh, stream or creek running behind it. And so we've got some topographic issues. So we've, we've basically come up with this rough layout to see what kind of density we could fit on this property. And it, in essence, it was maximum 64. Um, so we feel that this is the maximum possibly due to site constraints that we could ever fit. Um, like I said, this is kind of a rough layout. Uh, it's kind of proposed to have a uh, two-story on the front and three-story on the back with the garage in the bottom to be able to pull in uh, from the back side. So that's just the way the topography works. You got to kind of tear us down the hill with all these units. So that's, this is what we've come up with just for a rough estimate of unit count. Are there any questions while he's up here at the mic? I 
How many years is it time to get back here? Uh, 64 is what we believe is the maximum we could fit because of site constraints, which I believe allowable would be, what you say, Dave, 120? Yeah, yeah that, that's impossible at this site. There's just one entrance and exit. That's correct, yes. We've positioned that to best uh, street visibility, and since Bill Jones is a limited access, we, we wanted to have a limited access and in the best place possible. For site visibility so the 64 is maximum you think uh, could that be less than that if you get in there and the it could be depending on construction cost um, as you can see the six units that are off by themselves those could be very costly with retaining walls so that might be cut out so I'm not going to say that 64 is the absolute maximum but that's pretty close so I mean, if the, if the developer wants to spend and do a retaining wall where those six are by themselves, you might be able to do six more at most. I personally don't see it at this point. But until you get into site development plans, that's kind of one of those vague issues at that point. So we might end up with 55, who knows, but nowhere near 120. But what does the size of the units get in? I don't know. Uh, they're, they'd probably be about 22 foot wide, you know, 35 to 40 foot long. Um, considering that they're three story, the garage would be on the bottom, two car garage with a utility room at the end, and then you'd have two living spaces above it. So on the front side, you would just see two stories, and on the back side would be three stories with the, the, the garage and the basement. So each one would be a two level living unit? Yes. Yeah. And as that's why there's so many drives on here, the light hatch is because you have to terrace it down the hill. So going down that drive, one side you would see a garage and two stories. On the other side, you would just see two stories. You wouldn't see the garage because you just continuously going down the hill. That's the best option we see for this property to maximize the unit count. Is set up like I'm that. Kind of that as what I call those skinny houses. That kind of what we call well, these are more uh, townhome attached type. Um, with, they wouldn't be detached like the skinny houses. They would be attached. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at as far as the distance between these roads? Uh, <coughs> between the roads themselves? Center to center? Or is that kind of, is that Tenth <coughs> Avenue there, right? <coughs> Toward the top of the vicinity of the side map. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't have that way to scale that at this point. <coughs> but we would we would meet you know inter intersection spacing requirements as per the code. And side distance is probably your main driving factor in this one because of the curves and the hills. On a Bill Jones. I say it could be interesting. <coughs> it's a, it's an interesting piece of property. Yeah, it's <laughs> it it's looks, rough. It looks like. <laughs> Any other questions? Am I correct that right now this is not even in the city limits, is it? No, sir, it is. It is? It is yes, sir. sir. It's in the city limits of Springfield. This is outside the city limits, but this is inside the city limits. So on down, the city down limits the right here. On down the street, just a little bit, where those uh, trailers used to be is outside the city limits, yes, right? Yes, that's what we finally call the donut, one of, one of our three donut holes. Okay. Is there a road that actually comes in that the upper end in the industrial drive, Poplar Avenue or what, whatever? No, that is a dead end. Okay. There, this uh, Ever, Evergreen subdivision only has one entrance on the Bill Jones here at 10. Our entrance would be 
more situated up in this proximity that have good visibility both directions. As you're coming out, you can kind of see both lights really good. All right. Either everybody's through or they're thinking. <laughs> Okay, Dave. What was the staff recommendation on this? Well, the the staff is going to um, because we love to see a growing and prosperous Springfield. We're going to recommend the MRO. It's uh, it's uh, it, the piece of property is such that you're really never going to see an R10 development on it. it, it with the uh, infrastructure costs like they are now. Um, you, you know, you're pushing, if you can't get at least 28 on a cul-de-sac <coughs> now, you can't afford to do it. And then you're still going to wind up pushing homes into the 250, 265 neighborhood with material pricing as it's increased like it has over the last three or four months. All right. Any further discussion? So, with that said, this is a preliminary. We have, you know, we've not seen a site plan. We haven't seen a grading plan. We have no idea what they're really going to try to do with it. All we know is, is that they want to do multi-residential. Uh, previous discussions have, have been that they were going to be condominiums or uh, townhomes and, and so. Uh, I, you know, I don't know until we get all that information in if that's going to be an actual thing or not. Um, but once again, the uh, the only interest that we've seen of late is multi-residential. Um, next month, you may see a request for an annexation on some property that would be R10. But RS10. RS10. I'm sorry. Thank you, Gina. RS10. But uh, he's going to get more than 28 in there. I feel confident. So, have you had any feedback from the neighbors? No. Well, you know, when we do rezoning requests, we stick a sign up. We do not do mailings like we would do for a BZA conditional use or anything like that. Uh, because we post it in the newspaper, we post it on the property, but we have not heard any feedback one way or the other from any surrounding property owners. Once we get more detail on what we're going to do, this, this will come back before the board. It could. Uh, and the reason I say it could is uh, if it's not over 50,000 square feet, um, you're not we don't we don't have to bring it back to you but we have been bringing multi-residential to you if it goes as a townhome and has to have a uh, a, a plat to sell these and you know uh, com uh, public element and private element then it'll be a subdivision and that'll come to you guys because it's going to be well over two units. And then, uh, but if they don't go the sales route, I'll let you know, Mr. Townsend, you can always request for us to bring it to you as your privilege and right as a planning commissioner. But if it goes over 50,000 square feet, which I believe it will at 64 units, uh, it'll be coming to you. <laughs> I think it's south in favor of it. It's a it's a pretty challenging project. I'd have to say. I and if they want to try it, I, I think I, I make a motion that we approve it. Go to MRO. Okay. Do we have a second? We got a second. We have a motion and a second. We are ready to vote. <clears throat> Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Townsend. Yes. Ms. Boyd. Yes. Mr. Gregg. Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. 
Passes seven to zero. Okay, item 4.3 is the Village Green Subdivision Section 5 Performance Bond. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. Got a motion, and Ms. Boyd second. raised her hand for a second. Okay. Last month, you guys approved the final plat of Village Green's Section 5, which is the final section of that planned unit development. This is the bond amount for the remainder of the work. Um, if you've been out there, they've got, you know, uh, binder in, curbs in, uh, they've got water sewer in, they've got a majority of their storm drainage in. They don't have the, uh, they, they may have already even finished up the stormwater detention facility. I'm not sure one way or the other. Uh, Mr. Reyes is here, he can answer any questions. But this is the amount for the remaining work that uh, was submitted to us. We reviewed it, we made some changes, but uh, they have submitted a, a bond from Lexon, Lexon Insurance Company. And uh, our recommendation is obviously to accept the bond so that they can go ahead and register, record that plat and move forward with wrapping this up. He's got section four is close to being maintenance bond ready. Uh, he's got a few lots in there that we're holding. Once he gets all of his punch list done on that, we'll be getting a maintenance bond and bringing that to you guys as well. So we're, we're closing some things out. All right, any discussion on this one? Questions? Is there a motion then? So moved. Second. And we have a motion and a second. Uh, we're ready to vote. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Passes seven to zero. All right, item number 4.4 .4 is Sleepy Hollow Section 5 performance bond. Same screen on the Yes, sir. Is uh, there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? Thank you. So moved. Second. And Ms. Boyd, second. Got it. Yes, sir. All right, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is uh, Sleepy Hollow Section 5 back in October. Uh, Ms. Head and Ms. Attlee uh, presented this to you and uh, and and an equally large bond of over six hundred thousand dollars since then uh, Ray as construction company has done a lot of the infrastructure improvements and have brought that value of remaining work down to one hundred and eighty thousand seven twenty five and thirty three cents I'm gonna start rounding those up that's since are ridiculous but I apologize for that um, with that said, and, and I got to get with Mr. Reyes, it was brought to my attention that we never accepted a final plat for this subdivision. We only did a preliminary approval. So we're going to have to get that plat back out and uh, get it, get our comments. There were some outstanding comments previously get those corrected. The construction plans were good, but uh, the plat has a few things, and so I'm gonna get with Mr. Reyes this evening, right after this meeting, and I, I will get with uh, Miss Atley, and uh, we'll get uh, the comments to our department heads or request for comments to verify, and then we'll get this to the uh, land surveyor and get this moving on, because we really want to have it on the Board of Mayor and Alden. Well, We'll have the bond on the Board of Mayor and Alderman. I don't see how we're gonna be able to have uh, the, the plat the, to you guys. So it, we're, gonna, we're gonna plan to have the plat to you for the November Planning Commission meeting. And I apologize, Mr. Reyes, I just found this out within the last day or so. And, and that's what I need to talk to you about. So we recommend acceptance of this bond where they'll just put Mr. Reyes's uh, construction company further ahead in this process.
All I'll right. make a motion we accept it. Is there a second? Second. We got a second. We are ready to vote. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth? Yes. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Passes 7 to 0. Uh, item 4.6 is the CS zoning amendment. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? Skipped you skipped one. You skipped five. Oh, I did. Yeah, I marked it off too quick. Village Green Section 3, maintenance bond. Is there a motion to put this on the floor? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we'll have a motion and a second, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Village Green Section 3, um, Gray House Construction has uh, come and asked for dedication acceptance of the right of way, uh, sidewalks and infrastructure within that section of Village Greens. Uh, Public Works and all the other departments have uh, looked at what's remaining or needs to be bonded for dedication and maintenance. And uh, so uh, we recommend this value of 15500 is prescribed by a memo from Clayton Moore, our public works director, for dedication and acceptance of the infrastructure and rights of way for that section of Village Green, Section 3. Any questions on this one? This one, this one is closing out. A year from now, it'll be all ours and Mr. Reyes will be free and clear of it and he'll be happy to be okay do we have a motion, motion to accept. we have a motion and was there a second second okay we have a motion and a second ready to vote Ms. Boyd yes Mr. Townsend yes Mr. Poole yes Mr. Powell yes Mr. Hollinsworth yes Mr. Gregg yes Mr. Allen. Yes. Passes seven to zero. All right, now item 4.6, the uh, CS zoning amendment. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. I heard a motion, is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As uh, we have discussed at the two previous planning commission meetings, uh, this ordinance will amend the zoning ordinance very specifically section 11605 which is the commercial services districts and what it will do is it will remove multi-family from the residential activities um, and, it, and, it, and that's what it'll do in the permitted uses in section a and in section e and section g it's, re it's just amending no sections, removing any reference to multifamily that was there for bulk residential in the bulk regulations and the required yard areas in, the, uh, in that section. All right. Any questions? Is this, is this what we were talking about last month as far as uh, to try to restrict some of it unless someone had a specific specific use and then they could come before us and try to well we can rezone it that was what the discussion was is the CS you know is uh, very specifically for general retail trade right. it uh, generates jobs it generates sales tax as well as property tax uh, where the multi-residential doesn't uh, the you know multi-residential was not originally in the zoning ordinance it was added by an amendment in 2001 we've not seen too many we've seen four since 2001 two of those are going to go one of them is one we're going to discuss the flats at Moreland tonight but we could have just as easily rezoned both of those properties that are CS zoned to MRO So that, that's the intent of what we will do is if somebody wants to do multi-residential and they 
in, in a CS zone, they come to you guys and will ask for a multi-residential rezoning and you, you as a planning commission have more say in it whether you want to see multi-residential in that area or not as opposed to right now. Right now it's a permitted use by right and they turn in a site plan and they turn in a subdivision plat that meets all the requirements, you know, y'all have to approve it. All right, any other questions or discussion? Well, is there a motion on this item? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Well, Alan has a second. We are ready to vote, Gina. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yeah. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Pass 7 0. <clears throat> All right, we will jump back up to item uh, 4.1, and that's the flats at Moreland uh, site plan. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? Mr. Chairman, let me interject right now that uh, the developer is not here. Okay. He, he was caught in traffic, uh, and he and Anticipated being here at 535. I guess he didn't think we would. He got, he came from Atlanta, so he got caught in Nashville. David, uh, David, you gonna let me just while we're waiting, you only go to the BZA items? Yes, we could do that. Okay. Thank you. If 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 the planning commission is good with that, we can go ahead and discuss old business and uh, get you in, and then we'll be ready to add that at the end. That'll be fine with me. Do we need a vote on that? Too? I would say we voted to move it to the end. We can vote to move it further to the, to the end. end. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to the very end. Is, is there a motion to move it to the very <laughs> end? <laughs> so move. So move. Okay. I heard a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's going to the very end. Um, uh, the other business uh, for October with the BG, BZA agenda. Are Gina going to do that? Just Miss Head will handle that. All right, under old business, uh, and the reason it's under old business, we did not have a quorum for the BZA meeting in September, so we had to move it to October. Um, and um, Electrolux is requesting a temporary use permit to extend the construction trailer on the parking lot for six months at 600 Bill Jones Industrial Drive. That's my old business. The new business is Reyes Construction is requesting a 15-foot setback variance on 19th Avenue West to build a residence. Adam Hefner, on behalf of James Chandler Jr., is requesting a temporary use permit to allow for a temporary office space at 103 10th Avenue East. Clay Sneed is requesting a three-foot variance to allow for a pole sign to be replaced on an existing concrete base at 1801 Bats Boulevard. If you all have any questions about these particular ones, I can give you more specifics. Okay. Any other questions about BZA? Uh... <clears throat> And the re uh, if I'll just go into a little bit. Um, Reyes is, is a corner lot there. They're asking for, um, with the corner lot, you have two fronts, one side and one rear. So one of the fronts, they're requesting it to be, it'll be, if, they, if, it appro if approved, it'll be a 10 foot setback from um, 19th Avenue West. It's on John L. Patterson and 19th Avenue West. It's where the, the lot is located. Um, Adam Hefner, because of um, trying to keep his employees safe with the COVID-19, um, he has placed a um, storage container. Connex box. Yeah, Connex. I call them a Connex. I'm not sure what, if everybody knew what that was, but 
uh, in front of his building there uh, to, for him to use as an office space, trying to keep his employees spaced apart, but still being able for customers to come in and access, talk to him and everything like that. Um, this can be done just basically like the, the one that will Electrolux. If the BZA approves those, they can do it for six months and then staff can administratively approve it for another six months. After that, it has to go back to the BZA and you all have to look at it, they have to look at it and discuss it. But his, Mr. Hefner's intent is not to go more than a yeah. year. He, he, you know, we're, we're anticipating greener <coughs> pastures ahead with, from the COVID-19 and somewhere around July, he thinks he's gonna, would move it on off. Of next year. Of next, yeah, 2021. Right. And then Mr. Sneed, I think uh, I think he probably talked to y'all one time about this. Um, he's got, there used to be a, a pole sign, I believe, there at the old, was that a gas station? Is that what that was there? At one time, yes, there. Um, anyway, I think he has, there has, I guess there has a base that was kept there and everything, and he is proposing to put another sign back up there. I will say it is nice not having to wear a mask in the building now, even though we are separated <laughs> like we need to be, but uh, maybe things are getting better, I hope. Yes. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, the gentleman, uh, the developer with uh, the first item is still not here. Would you like to take a small break until he can arrive or... Uh, he even suggested he might be able to do speaker phone. Uh, Josh could check with him to see where he's at and uh, find out what would be best. Okay. Well, we have. Is there any old business that? No, that we have? went over the oh, yeah. all the old business. The old business was a BZA. We have no old business. I think at the last meeting I said something about the uh, the old Carter Lumber Company site. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, I think I, I, I might have stated I asked if it had been a year since that happened. That happened on January the 9th yes. this year. Mm -hmm. So it was still a while. But I did talk to Mark Fields, and he indicated that there was something that Yes, sir. On that, so. We have uh, notified Mr. Burgess that he has to move forward. He, we have given him from a specific date, 30 days. If he does not move forward on the cleanup of the buildings, we will engage a uh, demolition cleanup contractor. We've already had an asbestos study done, so we will we'll move forward and clean that up. And then after that, we will move forward with asking him to remove his car. Is that one brick at a time moving forward? No, once we, you know, once our time, you know, we, we've sent the letter. It, now that we've, we've sent the letter, we will move forward on it. Uh, I mean, it, it, we'll, we'll have to put it out for bid, but because it'll be over ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars but we'll have to put it out for bid mr fields will put it out for bid and then the lowest bidder will get the job and we'll move it forward as expeditiously as we possibly can all right is there anything else yes just uh, this whole tab he is behind a aluminum trucks going 30 miles an hour and he said it's got to be here at 540. So, okay. So he's, he's Would y'all like to take a small recess until Mr. Bullard can show up? We can't. Where, where is he now? I'm assuming he's he, he, miles away behind a semi truck. Traveling 30 miles an hour. So he Bullard. anticipates being here by 540. Wait till 540. Uh, do I call the recess or do we need a motion to recess? You can call the recess. Well, I think I will. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we'll readjourn at uh, approximately 540 or okay. whenever Mr. Bullard gets here, whichever comes first. Yeah.
Hopefully he'll be here by then. Unless there's <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not. Far Is everybody off. comfortable? Do we need? Do I need to turn on the AC? I didn't turn it on. And uh, everybody good. All right. Well, I'm on top of this right edge. Okay. Okay. I was at the parking lot across the from the south side and I saw a uh, truck on Main trying to make that right on 10th <laughs> by the depot. I oh, did you make like, it? I, I felt like I should go apologize to him for some reason, man. <laughs> it's tough, right? I hate that chunk of concrete. It's tough. About that. It's unnecessary, in my opinion. I tell you what, the depot has been full. Well, I mean, they got such a crowded corner to begin with, and they'll throw it whatever out there in the middle of it. Making that one way might be the only option. You, you got to take the curb out first. Come, in, come out on not be able to go in. Yeah. I, 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 hate, out there. Yeah, I hate to do it to Doug. He's people running that curb and then jump on the river. Now they're trying to shut that one up. Trying to shut down Cheatham Street. Sure did. Do you mind here? You, you want me to get on that side of time? Well, I'll tell you what, he's got a big business. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does. It's good to see uh, hometown businesses do that well. Standing room only most of the time. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got, you got the uh, Torino's. Uh, you get the catfish out, and that's about all you got as far as actual hometown. But everybody else is some kind of corporation somewhere that's in here. Who mm -hmm. went in there where the copper vault used to be? Dad's. Uh, that's all I know. Is what, what I heard about was they're going to be a kind of a hamburger kind of place, but they're going to open from 10 to 2. Just for lunch. Yeah, and I thought, you're taking up, that's where all the, the space is off. I mean, the courthouse is going on, you can't, we can park here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be from five to ten. You know, all the stuff's gone, but I don't know. I don't know if I ate there, but I've been told that Willie Mays over there has some really good food, but they got some odd hours too. They got odd hours. They'll take off vacation a little summertime, they'll, they'll be gone. When they're See, open, she, they're busy. What I understand about, I don't know a whole lot about it, but see, him and her both work in the bars in Nashville. I didn't know about him. You think she works in one of the bars in that? Well, of course, that's been slow right now. Because this thing's going on with COVID. But they say they got some killer brisket in there. Yeah, they need a good brisket. It is good. <laughs> I didn't know why they closed at 2.30, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I don't know how they... Hey, I'm going to tell you where to go eat it. It's down here at 49 Market next to Kenny's Road. Mm -hmm. That guy's got to set up over that. that uh, a little trailer there? A little trailer? Yeah. Let me tell you. I mean, he's packed every afternoon. And he got some of the best food I've ever eaten in my life. And he gives you a plate of it. To some, you take one, one, one plate. Can eat, you know, two people. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> it is good. They ain't talking about that at work. But he had gyro, that's what he said. Gyro. Mm -hmm. Lamb, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, we had, uh, had a big steak the other day. It was a big. I mean, me and my wife could have both of you. And I wasn't gonna be a B taker to it. All right, we'll call the meeting back to order and uh, go back up to 4.1, the flats at Moreland, and that's a site plan in our, our packet here. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I had that while I was having a discussion. Uh, 
developer has presented uh, this uh, 76 unit uh, multi-family development. It's off of Moreland Drive. Uh, Moreland is right here. Um, uh, Sonia Bentley's office is in this area right here. Uh, Dollar General. Um, uh, Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is this way. Memorial Boulevard's up here at this intersection. Um, the developer and uh, Ms. Uh, Josh Lines, Mr. Lines uh, from Clover Engineering, they have submitted to staff a uh, site plan that meets the requirements of uh, our site, uh, of site development. Um, they've, uh, and uh, we have approved that. Staff has approved it. We recommend approval to you as a planning commission. It's uh, 76 units, um, roughly 108,000 square feet of space, built space. Is that, is that where the, the, they're moving the dirt in right now? I, where, where your coach sack is? I don't believe so. Uh, I mean, they they got a bunch of storage back there right now of, of building material that's back in behind there. I think that it's where the more property is, where, right yeah, behind it's, it's the old, old house. Property. Right yeah. behind the old house, but they've been right. doing that for a little while. Yeah. I don't, it's, 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 it's it has part, nothing to do with That's up in here. It has nothing to do with this side. It's on up in this area. Okay. But, uh, we, the, the, the plat is, uh, uh, is a two-lot subdivision. Staff will handle that. There will be a temporary cul-de-sac right here um, that will, uh, will become, over time, this road will go on all the way up and tie into uh, Bats Boulevard. Is a projected. Did come in right beside the, the old house? It would be down from the old house, but somewhere in that neighborhood between... Where the, where the truck parking lot is? Yeah, and jo between Jones and... We, you know, it's still kind of up in the air. We, you know, I, I'd have to look and see where the KFC entrance is, but it'll, it'll be between the old house and the Springfield Inn somewhere. But that doesn't have anything to do with this. <laughs> That's future development. Right. You know, we've got some temporary cul-de-sacs that have probably been temporary since I've been here. So, you know, future development. Okay. So staff recommends approval of uh, the flats at Moreland. Mr. Bullard is here if you have any questions, the developer representing the developer uh, of this project. Okay. Has anybody got anything they need to ask? We've worn them out, Mr. Allen. Well, I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> if not, is there a motion on this item? I want to ask, you, uh, on this development, you were talking about the roads going into this. Now, where where does that where is that? This is a uh, this is Moreland Road here. If if you come on down to, it, it ties in the intersection is Twenty Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. And if you go on across Twenty Second Avenue, you go into Lowe's Road. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's and so this is uh, Sonia Bentley's uh, the dental office, mm -hmm. dental yeah. offices and, and one other develop uh, State business Farm. right in that area. State Farm is State it? State Farm. Um, and like I said, uh, uh, Harbor Freight and uh, Dollar General, that strip mall right there is right there. And then you have uh, Moreland uh, Shopping Center right pretty much right in this area where the the rental center is mm -hmm. and then advanced auto or auto zone, Burke, that area. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that maybe turned into Bats Boulevard. I missed something. Well, future development. You know, Mr. Moore still owns his property, 
right this is where the property ends right here uh, at some t point in the future when they choose to develop this area here this road can go on through it's a temporary cul-de-sac right now that's a temporary easement and it'll go on through on up to Bats Boulevard in the future not not presently if this is successful it may be sooner rather than later how many units is that again 76 am I right and correct Mr. Bull 76 units explain the three story to me is that each unit is three story no sir it's uh three stories of individual units is that correct miss bullard miss bullard's here if you have any very specific questions we we have not yet seen a submittal we've talked to the architect we've gotten a digital submittal for the building plans but uh mr fields handles that i i usually don't look at that but just curiosity yes sir It's probably be something similar to the leg the legacy villages, but one story more. Gotcha. And we are equipped. Uh, the city is equipped for fire hazards, anything like that, to handle that. We we are. We have a ladder truck. That's why to go to 100 feet. That's why our maximum height is 70. These plans have to also be turned into the state fire marshal office for review. There will probably, uh, I, I feel confident with 76 units in three levels uh, that uh, fire suppression uh, sprinklers will be required as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, once the fire marshal approves, then we approve, but we can't, you know, because this is uh, multi-residential family housing uh, not townhomes, mm -hmm. and so because of that, the state that's the state fire marshal's preview on safety and, and review. Uh, if it was townhomes, we would be allowed to review it by state law, but we're not. So, yes, they will. It'll be a it'll be a safely designed and built multi-family residential project. Am I speaking correct, Mr. Bullock? It will be sprinkled. It will be sprinkled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do a, a, a poor project in this day and age. Everybody's wanting to do their best work. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Just trying to get my bearings. Where is, is this behind the dollar store? Yes. Okay. It's between the dollar store and 22nd Avenue. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Sonia Bentley's dental office is right here. Um, yes, on down at the corner is the pediatric office. Got you now. Okay. I, sometimes I can't give the best no. geographical bearings. I apologize, Mr. Townsend. I look at it so much, I just assume everybody knows where everything's at, and I apologize to you. But, uh, you know, we may need to work on our vicinity maps, too. That's a, that's a little, <laughs> it's a little vague. All right, any other questions? Good. And we'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. I heard two seconds. Second. All right, we're ready to vote. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Passes 7 0. All right, is there any other business we need to talk about or take care of tonight? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Before you adjourn, to adjourn. Okay. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. since you are adjourned, I just wanted to once again thank you, commissioners, for your service to our community, and we hope that you have a 
good rest of the week and a good month of October, and we'll see you back here in November. And you know where we're at. We'd be glad to teach y'all how to review plans anytime you want to know how. <laughs> y'all have a good rest of the day. <laughs>